Hello and welcome to Pantheon of the Geeks. You join us for a first look at the Death Watch Codex out today. Hopefully the video has gone up today as well, so you'll see it on the day it's come out. Haven't had a look at it yet. Literally, it's still in the cellophane. There it is. Not lying. There is the cellophane. So we'll take that off and uh, have a look inside it then. That said, I've seen a few little bits in the store copy at Games Workshop. So I know there's a very cool flyer in here somewhere. <laughs> so, nice embossed cover as usual, nice artwork on the front, loving this sword. And let's have a look at what's inside. So, hopefully all that's on the camera there. Yep, okay. So, we have some interior artwork, we have the Death Watch logo. Slayers of the Alien. Uh, we have them fighting Tyranids. Boo! Hiss! What the Alien Hunters? Boo! Uh, we have um, front page there with the fighting orcs and a little bit of a blow about the Death Watch. Mm -hmm. We have a long vigil. You have to read all this stuff. And about the Audio Xenos, my favourite order of the Inquisition. Um, fighting Tyranids again though. That's Kraken, isn't it? High Fleet Kraken. Oh. It looks like it to mm. me. That's, it. That's an Ultramarine as well. With a, yeah. with a knife. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're so dead, mate. <laughs> um, a chapter icon for the chapter on there, in this case, that's Blood Angels from this angle anyway. Then you have the uh, battle plate there, so there's a nice overview there of the actual Death Watch. It's pretty cool. I do like the fact that from all the different chapters. The oh, yeah, you got the different bolt shells. Hellfire, is that Dragonfire? Mm. Kraken. Is that Kraken? Kraken. Kraken, yeah. yeah. And is that a vengeance? Vengeance, yeah. I'm reading it sort of half upside yeah. down, so I'm doing pretty well actually, considering. Uh, we have a map of the solar system. Solar system, galaxy. I was doing well. Uh, and uh, we have some banners in there, which is really cool actually. Mm -hmm. They're really awesome. I like this one with the eagles and the little pyramid. <laughs> That's cool. And then obviously they've got ones that have got like bits of... Is that a Tyranid? Looks cool. like it, doesn't it? Looks like it. Might not be. It's a bit weird and deformed. Mm. And then we have um, the Watch Fortress of, of Telsa Pro. So there must be different Watch Fortresses and this is just telling you the makeup and who's in it. Helen Griffin. Confidential, so classified. Classified Blood Angels mm -hmm. as well. We've got the structures as well as well. Structures of kill teams. This is cool. I need to read all this. Uh, oh, Cassius. And then Peoples of the... Uh, That's the uh, Overwatch, isn't yes, it? Yes, Overwatch yeah. team. They're all there. That's cool. Wow. So I need to paint them. Yes. Then we have some details about each of the chapters. Crimson Fists. My three favourites are all together. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's Crimson Fists. Where's your Crimson Fists? You've got your finger over it there. No, I can't see it. <laughs> no. Crimson Fists are there. Uh, Brothers of the Death Watch. It's that looks like Overwatch, That's Overwatch cover. cover yeah. um, the Bane of Aliens. There's lots of cool lore in this, by the looks of it. Mm. Quite glad about this. It was since I've read to see some 40k lore, to be honest. But it's different because it's, I don't think it's been done before. Mm. From what I remember Previously, um, there was only ever an upgrade kit for a metal upgrade kit mm. for a squad. I did get a squad of them. I don't know where they went, though. They vanished into the warp uh, hunting aliens. But I did have one squad of Death Watch mm. for years. They even fought in a massive battle with really? them as well. And done some other stuff as well. Cool. Um, and they lost, by the way. They got absolutely obliterated by the Eldar. Um, <laughs> there we go. Um, watch captains, chaplains, and librarians. So, again, we've got most of this stuff, I imagine, will be pretty standard. Space Marines do this, Space Marines do that. Terminators, Dreadnoughts, transports. Uh, one reader up there. 
And then we have the uh, the new thing, the Corvus Black Star. There it is. There it is, all in its glory. Um, so this thing looks awesome. Seriously, the the model of it kind of looks like the Alien Dropship. But if Batman had designed the Alien Dropship, in my opinion, because it's just got all the angular stealth about it, and it's got sort of like the overall sort of shape of the Alien's Dropship. Um, Some more images. Bikes. Bikes I found out pretty good with the Death Watch. We'll get to see that soon. Um, some more going on there. And librarians. And then we have a over the top view of the Corvus. That's pretty cool. I do really like looking at mm. this one, actually. I'm always a bit 50 50 on Space Green Flyers. I know they look like flying bricks, but normally they are warm to them eventually. This one I just liked from the moment yeah. I saw it. It was like, I think the worst one was the storm chicken for me. Yeah, this <laughs> is storm raven. Yeah, storm that's, chicken. That's because you saw it from behind first. You thought it was like a chicken. Yeah. Uh, fine. The, the name stuck. The name stuck with us, yeah. But this thing, I love the. It, just, it is just the aliens dropship designed by Batman. Yeah. It really is. Uh, but covered in Inquisition symbols, which is also awesome. Uh, Hunters of the aliens, some nice painted pics of the models. Mm. Some more nice space pics and models. Fighting Elder there. Yeah, that's ours, isn't it? Yep. Still half painted. Yeah. Got so much to paint. We have. Too much. Um, <laughs> Quite in the time. That's cool. Because normally that's the most I've ever seen of these guys in, in one place is like a single squad or two. Mm. And then Overwatch had the most sort of Death Watch I'd seen. So the entire army of them just sounds cool to me. This guy looks immense. I want him. So stay tuned. He looks cool. Yeah. I'm pretty. There's, I was having a look. I've not seen any chapter symbols on him at all when I was looking in the shop at the pictures of him. Maybe there is, and I've just not missed it. But because he's got this uh, halberd, like a, sort of like a grey knight halberd almost, I don't think he's a grey knight. I think he might actually be an Empress custodian. All right. That's my thought on it because mm. just the way he stood, he doesn't stay grey knight to me. He says custodian. He's just got that guard stance about him. He could be a grey knight though, but I'm thinking, That's you know, because all these guys are from chapters. Technically, the custodians are space marines. Mm -hmm. They are space marine chapter. Technically, very technically. Um, so maybe he's from them, maybe he isn't, maybe he's just decided he doesn't want to show his allegiance and he just wants to be Inquisition, maybe he's a Grey Knight, who knows? Maybe he's, he's some sort of like, uh, warrior like Garrow or something. Yeah. One of the Black be. Shields, maybe one of the mm. chapters. Maybe he's ancient, because he's got a white beard and everything. Space Marines can live for, for a long time, yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. he's one of those classified ones that it said before. Possibly. He's the Watchmaster anyway, I do like that model, so I love again that. Plus when they bring these out, we might get Death Maths mm. next mm. month. Because uh, we've bought a lot this month. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. We haven't got it today unfortunately. I would, would have really loved to get it today. Because even got, uh, it's got Harlequins in it, which you've seen us unboxed before, but it does have a plastic Eldrad, mm. both of them who's one of my favourite Elder characters. And I've got a metal model of him. It looks pretty much the same. I think there's a few different options. But really for the Death Watch, and it's got Captain Artemis in it. Mm. Who I've got the Inquisi Inquisition model for. Oh, Inquisitor that guy model. with the Red Hood. The Red Hood, yeah. Yeah. Do you think what chapter he's from with the Red Hood? It looks da uh, Dark Angels to me. He does, but then he has this Red Hood. Unless they've just painted it red to be different. It looks cool, though. It does, actually. And I've got a Helen Griffin there. Yeah. They're always cool. And that's the guy from the cover with the sword. He's all on the camera. Yeah. Yeah. It is. yeah. Um, so very cool. Very cool. I love. Oh, there it is. Oh, this thing. This is so awesome. Um, I'm definitely going to have to get one of these. Mm. I, I just thought that's awesome. Those are the guys from Death Watch, aren't they? Yes, they are. Painted, unlike mine. But yeah, this is cool. Uh, <laughs> keep looking at it. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, some uh, bad moons again. That's my one of four. Uh, one, yeah. and I've got speed freaks and bad moons. You may have seen them on previous videos. I think some of the first videos I ever did were uh, the bad moons. I think they were actually, yeah. yeah. 
uh, Black Back Spear Strike Force. Another. Oh, this is the actual uh, force organization going on here. Um, so I actually want to have a read of this. I'll stand up. What's that next to it? So the restrictions. Let's zoom in as well for this one, so you can see it properly. There we go. This attachment must include at least one command choice, one chord choice, one auxiliary choice, blah blah blah, as usual. So it's made up like that, you can see that, don't need to read all that out. Command benefits, veteran master of the watch. This attachment is chosen as your primary attachment. You may choose to re-roll the result of the Death Watch Warlord traits. Flexible mission tactics. If it retains one or more black spear strike forces. You can change the army's mission tactic on page 103, one, one extra time during the mission. Usually this allows you to change the mission tactics twice during the game rather than once. If your warlord is a watchmaster or has the vigilance incarnate warlord traits, you'll be able to change the mission tactics up to three or four times. That sounds cool. That's what I read of that. And then we've got sudden onslaught. Non all non vehicle models in a black spear strike force have the deep strike special rule. So why even bikes? What are they vehicles? Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. They class as vehicles, I can't remember. Core plus one plus, auxiliary one plus, and command one to three. So we have the watch commander, he's a watch master, watch chaplain, watch guy, watch captain, chaplain, librarian, dreadnought, venerable dreadnought, one of them. Kill team, one unit of veterans, Aquila kill team, one unit of veterans, at least one choice from the following list librarian, terminators, vanguard veterans, and bikers. Dropship, that's an auxiliary choice. So one core is a black star. It is a dropship as well, so it's just like the aliens think. One dreadnought, a venerable dreadnought. One Furo kill team. You have veterans, you have terminators. Or any number of the choices from the faunus. Librarian, vanguard veterans and bikers. So there's loads of them. Venerator to kill team, one you have veterans, one you have bikers, any number of the following. Malleus killer, one you have veterans, one you have terminators. Any number of choices from the following. The Matters Kill Team, when you veterans, when you have vet Vanguard veterans, any number of the following. Again, Librarian Terminators and Bikers, again, are the choice. Progatus Kill Team is when you have veterans, one Librarian, one year Terminators, and any other than the following. And we have Land Raiders, Redeemers, and Crusaders. And the Drop Wing, which is also an auxiliary choice, so you can have three of them. See, that's tempting. Um, Strategium and Command Team. Or Watch Captain, Chaplain, or Librarian. One of the following from the list, which is you know, Veterans, Aquila, Kill Team, Fury. So it's these ones. And then a Watch Company, which is on page 98. Watch Captain. Four choices from the following of those. So that's how the force is made up in this. That's pretty good. Just to get your benefit. We have the War Gear list. It's pretty standard fare, grab pistols in there. Death Watch shotgun, we'll have to have a look at that. Stock pattern bolt gun, chainsaw, lightning claw, power fist, and so on. Heavy bolts, missile launchers, Death Watch frag cannon. Death Watch teleporter homer. There are the relics, the tomb of ectoclades. Bane bolts of Arissa. The Osseus Key, Dominus Aegis, the Thief, Se Thief of Secrets, and the Beacon Angelus. They're pretty standard stuff for the vehicles. Right, so let's have a look at the actual uh, unit. Okay, so we have the Watchmaster. So we can get the camera at a slightly better angle. That's right. I'll just zoom in for you. There we go. So Guardian Spear, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades, Clavis, Iron Halo, and they should not fear Imperial Character, Inventory, Inventory Character, Mission Tactics, Master of Tactics. It's basically just saying that it allows you to uh, do what it said on the previous page. Basic items from the Special War Gear List Relics of the Vigilant. Good on starts there, 6 5. Lots of fours, a five, four, and a ten, and a two plus. The watch captain. Lots of options on the watch captain. So you can just build him any you want. 
Hot pistol, pretty standard, sort of like a special captain. Yeah, there's, there's not much difference though, apart from obviously what you can take. Uh, Chaplin, there's Cassus again. Those are the Chaplin rules. Librarian. So plenty of options there for the librarian, biomancy, demonology, divination, fulmination, geokinesis, libra, sorry, libraus, uh, pyromancy, technomancy, telekinesis, and telepathy. Took all those. Uh, level two as usual. So basically, pretty much a librarian. Lots of options though. Then we have the veterans. So we have um I think that's five, that's five veterans. They're kind of just like Death Watch guys, but they've got loads of options on the weapons list. So we're going to take items from the heavy weapons. So you basically make a heavy weapons squad with that as well. No grade veteran to a black shield, no grade different veteran to a watch sergeant. We take items from the special war gear list, and they can take the Corvus Black Star as well as other transports. I see a lot of Corvus Black Stars coming this my way, to be honest. Then we have Terminators, a little Salamander friend there. One Terminator, <laughs> okay. May include additional four Terminators. Um, anyone who can replace them or with any weapons they want. So it's basically a Terminator squad with whatever combination of stuff you want in it. So there's plenty of flexibility though. Uh, Dreadnought. Down the fair from the dreadnought. There's four attacks. Yeah, I think that's pretty standard. Venerable dreadnought. The Vanguard veterans. Again, that's one Vanguard veteran model. And then you can just build on that anything you want. That's really that's really cool actually because you're not really stuck to the standard size of things. Bikers, one bike. They include up to four additional bikers. Might have to get some of them actually. Then we have rhinos. She's pretty standard. Kind of death watch vehicle equipment list, which looks pretty normal to me actually. And then we've got the Razorback, the Drop Pod, and the one I'm really looking forward to the read of is the Corvus Black Star. So for 180 points, you get a twin linked assault cannon, Black Star cluster launcher, four storm strike missiles, and ceramic plating. It's an assault vehicle and count to 12 models, it can also carry bikes and jump infantry. No fire points, two access points. At the front and one at the rear, so there must be another hatch at the back as well as these two at the front. Oh. I'm just pointing into the now, you can see it. Let's point to these. Uh, we, what was it? Blister Skull 4, front and side armor 12, so it's pretty good for a flyer really. It's an attack flyer, can hover. Pursuit 2 and agility, uh, sorry, Pursuit 3 and agility 2. And we replace the twin link assault cannon with a twin link last cannon for nothing. <laughs> Okay, so that's just turn into a tank killer wine, don't you? Uh, replace all four storm strike missiles with twin linked Black Star rocket launchers. Mm. I don't know what that is, but it sounds cool. 15 points. Take a searchlight, extra armor, a locator beacon, or a hurricane bolter for 15 points. And I can take one of the following upgrades, which is an Inferno Halo launcher or an Auspex Array. I'll have to look up what that is. Right, cool. So you've got a design, isn't it, there, from Death Yeah, just telling you about the pursuit and the agility, because it's, it's to do with Death in the Skies. Right. And then we've got Land Raiders. We have the Redeemer, which again is pretty standard. 250, 240 points. Another 250 points for the Crusader. We have the Aquila Kill Team formation. Which is in more detail here, but it's pretty much as it was at the beginning. It just tells you that the kill team 
special rules there. And we'll zoom in so you can have a read of them. Here we are. That's our special rules. Okay, that was the Venator S Furio. There we go. The Dominatus. Feel free to pause it as usual. I'll just go through these ones. This one is the Malleus. And the Pergatus. We have the Strategium Command. Watch company. And then the Corvus Black Stars, three of them. All the submission targets and enemy fire on one creature. Can you any failed and penetration rolls? Imagine that those three last cannons. <laughs> and there we go. So those are the formations. Then we have the uh, appendix at the back. With the Warlord Traits table. Okay, so we have the Death Watch Special Rules, Atonement Through Honour. Go on, zoom again. Model of this special rule doubles its attacks in the assault phase. It's often combat with an independent character, monster creature, or a vehicle. Or in combat, it contains more than models and friendly ones. Count on models locked in combat, not just the ones engaged with the model. Okay. Combat squads. Factions and allies, Coach Death Watch have the Death Watch faction and part of the armies of the Imperium and allies such. Warlord traits. So these warlord traits. So one is Bane of Monstrosity, so you can reroll all failed wounds and penetration rolls for your warlord against monstrous creatures, tanks and super heavy vehicles. Could be useful. Lord of Hidden Knowledge, roll d6 so your ward has gleaned as many insights into the enemy's weaknesses. You can use each of these insights once during battle. Three roll a failed, two hit, two wound or armour penetration roll. Hmm. Could be good, could be useless. You might only roll it once, you know, I get to use it once. Castilian of the Black Vault. All weapons carabay ward have the Master Craft special rule. Except relics of the Vigilant. That's probably more useful. Bringer of the Red Dawn. Your world has night vision special rule. In addition, after deployment, you can declare that the night fighting special rule is in effect during game turn one. Vigilance incarnate. You can change the mission tactics, the opposite, and one additional time during the battle. A master of the void hunt. Start of each of your turns, your warlord can call down a lance strike upon the enemy unit within 12 inches. Roll dice or three or more of the units suffers D3 strength 6 AP 4 hits. When result of 6 it says suffers D3 strength 10 AP 2 hits. Any wounds that are inflicted are randomly allocated. That's really what you want to roll, to be honest. <laughs> Is that per turn? Is it? Each the start of each of your turns, you basically get the free blast of the enemy. Oh, <laughs> that's nasty. Roll a dice on a three or more of the units of his D. So you need to roll three plus. But if you roll a six, you're pretty much just destroying anything you hit. Boom. Nice. So our mission tactics. So we got up here. The mission tactics special rule represents the unique way in which the Death Watch go to war. The start of each on your first turn, pick one of the following mission tactics. It'll remain active for the entire battle unless you decide to change it as described below. As long as the tactic is active. Affects all units in, in your army that have the mission tactics special rule. Once during the battle at the start of a turn after the first, you can choose to change the current mission tactic for another. So we have Furio. Whenever a unit with mission tactics special rule uh, tags an enemy troop unit, you can reroll any to hit rolls of a one. Venator. 
Whenever a unit with a submission attack special attacks an enemy fast attack unit, you can reel any to hit rolls of a 1. Yeah, see how they use them. Whenever a unit then it's Dominatus, and that's basically a leech unit. Uh, Malleus is against heavy support units, and Pergatus is against HQ units. So basically, if there's a unit you really need to get rid of, so you can start, the, if there's a lot of troops in the, in the enemy's guard, so you're fighting orcs and they've got, oh, tyrannies, you've got all the troops, you start with Fury or once you've managed to sort of get rid of a lot of the troops by reeling ones to hit, you can then switch your tactics to something else, whoever's the next big threat. Oh, right, so you can switch tactics then? Yeah, you can do it once, but if you've got the watch captain guy, mm -hmm. you can do it then another time. Oh, and if you roll the Vigilance Incarnate on the Wallace trait, you can do it another time. So you can technically change up to four times. Wow. So basically, uh, you can focus on what you want to kill. So, it, again, if you're fighting like an elite unit with lots of elites in there, you can start with the, um, which one was it? The Dominatus Tactics. But again, if you're going up against Nids and Orcs, there's probably going to be a lot of troops in there. So mm. you can start with the Furio. Yeah. Just rerolling all those ones to hit against troops. Once they're dead, you switch it around to what's ever giving you the most grief, either elites, HQs, heavy sport, whatever it is. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's really interesting, I like that. Yeah, so say you're fighting the Imperial Guard Army with lots of tanks, you just go to heavy sport to start with. We're rolling ones. I like that, yeah. I like yeah, that as well. Yeah, I like that. It makes it very focused, it makes yeah. the army a focused army then. You basically focus on one thing and switch tactics yeah. to focus on something else. Your enemy will know what you're doing though, so... That's the other side of that. So, weapons. Black Star Cluster Launcher. We have Frag Cluster, which is Strength 4, 6, AP, Bomb 1, a Large Blast. Or Infernus Cluster, which is Strength 5, AP 4, Bomb 1, Blast, Ignores Cover. We have the Black Star Rocket Launcher, which is a Corvid Warhead, which is 30 inch range. Strength 6, AP4, Heavy D6, and Skyfire. Alright. And Dracos Warhead, which is th 30 inches, Strength 4, AP5, Heavy 1, Large Blast, but it ignores cover. Nice. Uh, then we have the Cycle Missile Launcher, which is standard fare from Terminators. Death Watch Frag Cannon, which is a frag round template. Strength 6, Assault 2, Rending, or Solid Shell 24. With strength 7, AP 3, assault 2 impact. Impact of the target as units in 12 inches, the weapon strength is increased to 9 and its AP is increased to 2. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Death Watch shotgun. That comes with crypt clearer rounds, range 16, strength 4, assault 2, and shred. Xeno purge slug, range 16, strength 4, AP 4, assault 2. Worm's breath shell. Which is a template, but it turns into a flamer. Uh, <laughs> holy shit, that was cool. Oh, I need, I need a unit with shotguns. Um, template, strength 3, AP 6, assault 1. And then Deathwind launches the, the bottom, which we've seen before. Hurricane bolters, Infernus heavy bolter is there. Um, which is 36, 5, 4, assault 3, Infernus template. But again, that's basically carrying a heavy bolter or a heavy flamer, basically. You don't have to choose, just take both. And then sell tape them together. A bit of, a bit of ripply going on there for me. <laughs> <laughs> again. Oh, that's cool. I like that. That, that looks pretty cool too. I think one of them. Let's talk about the bolt garden. So, we have a range 30, strength X. It's kind of like a sniper, isn't it? So yeah, AP5, heavy 2 sniper. Storm strike missiles. There, and then we have special issue ammunition. Ammunition? Mm. Ammunition, that's from Grand Vendor. Ammunition. Uh, Dragonfire bolts, Hellfire rounds, Kraken bolts, and Vengeance rounds. All what we've seen the Death Watch used before, really. Uh, lots of options on where you want to shoot and how you want to shoot it. Again, so you, your guys aren't stuck mm. doing one thing, you can basically on the fly change to what you need to change to. I was going to say that first one sounds like it should be in zombie side, Dragon Fireball. Yeah, you're going to destroy <laughs> an entire area of whatever you find. Um, melee weapons. What is that? Guardian Spear. There's the Guardian Spear. 
It's plus one strength, it's AP2, it's melee, block and two-handed. So block, once by turning this off, there's a model equipped with a Guardian Spear can attempt to block a single attack that targets them. After the hit roll is made, roll a dice. If the result is higher than the hit roll, then the attack has been blocked. It has no effect. Attacks do not have to... Uh, a hit roll cannot be blocked. Well, it reduces your enemy's effectiveness a little bit. In fact, it's strength 1 AP 2. It's pretty cool. Um, and then we've got Heavy Thunder Hammer. Heavy Thunder Hammer. Which is strength 10 AP 2, melee, percussive, concussive, two-handed, unwieldy. Pulverize. Uh, power fist and auxiliary melter gun. Don't know. A model equipped with a power fist and an auxiliary melter gun can fire its melter gun instead of shooting another weapon and attacking the assault phase as a power fist. They can do it both in the same turn. Yeah, so it's basically what um, Salamander. Salamander guy has. Yeah, yeah. He's, got, he's got a power. Uh, he's got my two favorite weapons: a power fist and a melter gun, sort of melted together. Mm. That's how you do it. <laughs> a Xenophase Blade. Molecular are realignment fields. Um, Says some vulnerable saving throws against wounds inflicted by this weapon must be re rolled. AP3. As a user strength. We have some specialist war gear over here. Box specs. There's the Clavis. Subtract one from the weapon skill, uh, ballistic skill, and initiative characters of enemy vehicles within six inches of a model equipped with a Clavis. Okay. Um, Deathwatch Teleporter Hammer. Running units composed entirely of models in Terminator armor or have sudden onslaught special rule. Do not scatter when they deep strike. So long as the first model is placed within six inches of the Deathwatch Teleport Hammer's bearer for, for this to work. The bearer of Deathwatch no, is pretty much like a Teleport Hammer. There's not much difference there. Um, Hellfire Shell at the top. Okay. Everything else is pretty standard looking. Armour, death lock, vehicle equipment. There we go, this is the one I was wanting to read. The Infernum Halo Launcher. You can reroll fell cover saves for the Corvus Black Star. That is jinking if it is equipped with an Infernal Halo Launcher. That's pretty useful. We can give it an Auspex Array, which is the Corvus Black Star. It's equipped with an Auspex Array that has this strafing run special rule. Okay. So, on to the relics of the Vigilant. Bane Bolts of Erixia. A model is equipped with the Bane Bolts of Erixia can use the following special issue ammunition, page 105, in addition to any other types they can normally use. Bolt pistols with kill shot. Bolt gun also with kill shot. Uh, let's assault one. Um, stalker pattern bolt gun. Heavy two kill shot and sniper, so it gives them all kill shot. Kill shot. If the two wound roll for an attack with this weapon is a six, it has instant death. Don't care how many wounds you have, you are dead. <laughs> the beacon Angelus, friend of the units, do not scatter when they deep strike, so as long as the first model is placed in six inches of a model bearing the beacon Angelus, in addition, once per game, the start of any friendly movement phase, the bearer can use the beacon Angelus to teleport his comrades to his position. When he does so, remove one friendly unit that has the Death Watch faction from the board. Even if it's locked in combat, they can immediately arrive within six inches of the bearer using the deep strike rules. So I'm not going to fight you, I'm going over there to kill your boss. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> I can see a lot of tactical use for that, actually, to be honest. I quite like that. Uh, Dominus Aegis. If a model equipped with the Dominus Aegis does not move in the movement phase, it gains an in four plus invulnerable save until the start of your next movement. The Osseus Key. The Osseus Key has, is a clavis, so it uh, ruins the day as a vehicle trying to shoot you or attack you. In addition, if the model is equipped with the Osseus Key attacks a vehicle or a building in the assault phase, of a roll of dice after it has been attacked have been resolved to determine the effects. One is no effect, two to three attacks was a glancing hit, four to six attacks suffers a penetrating hit. So if you're going to take a clavis, that's the way to do it. <laughs> now, the Thief of Secrets is basically a power sword by the looks of it. Uh, AP3, melee and biophage. Okay. Biophage. Whenever a model inflicts an unsaved wound with the Thief of Secrets, the weapon learns the weakness of the model's unit 
and any other units of that same type. For example, if it wounds a Karn effect, it learns the weaknesses of all Karn effects. And a future attacks made at using the Thief of Secrets against units whose weakness is known to it will successfully score a wound to hit on a roll of a 2 plus. And this lasts until the end of the battle. That's nasty. I like that. I, I like the thinking sort of blade that yeah. uh, analyses its enemy. I know you. <laughs> and now I can kill you on a 2 plus, or to hit you on a 2 plus. To wound, yeah, to wound roll, T plus, even better. Um, that was really good actually. I read that wrong, I thought it meant to hit, it's to wound. That's no, just really nasty. I want one of them. Uh, the tomb of the Ectoclades. Now you're just stealing Ghostbusters terms, Games Workshop. Since that franchise is no dead to me, carry on. Uh, at the start of each of your turns, you can pick one of your mission tactics listed on page 103. To the start of your next turn, this tactic applies to the models carrying the Tomb of Exoclades and all models in the unit that have the Death Watch faction. This, in addition to the benefits of any other mission tactic, that they currently be active and affecting your Death Watch forces. So basically, you can, at the start of each of your turns, you can pick one of the mission tactics. Until the start of your next turn, so that surprises them all. Carry on. So a single model can have any tactic they want, in addition to whatever tactic everybody else has got. Mm -hmm. So again, depending on how you're building things, that could be really useful, or not at all. That is completely dependent on how you built it. Most things are, because there's there's so many options. Uh, so then we have the tactical objectives, which I'm not really going to go through because there's loads of them. Um, and that's it. We have a summary at the end of the book. And there's the book. So, Claire. Yeah. What did you think? I think that's really cool, actually. Um, I might have a read of it myself. Because I don't really know much about the Death Watch. I've, since getting into yeah, the games myself, I've not really known much about the Death Watch. Well, there's never been that much about them. It's only no. been Grey Knights. And yeah. The, and the Sisters of Dispeared off into the distance. Yeah. So the other arms of the Inquisition have been covered a lot more in the past. Yeah. But the Odia Xenos hasn't, and mm. specifically Death Watch is about the only thing they've ever had. I mean, I've seen them mentioned in like other books, but nothing yeah. like this. I've never seen a codex for them, so yeah, uh, I, I think it's going to be quite interesting for me to have a look through. Yes, I think uh, I'm going to have a proper read of the lore and stuff in that as well. But I can see a lot of options with that. Mm. There's just so many things you can do. You're building a kill team, basically, with all the options available to you. So you can have units, completely random units, much like the kill team that you get in the actual Overwatch. Overwatch yeah. I think probably based on the fact that Overwatch was maybe quite popular yeah. and everyone liked the Death Watch in there, I think that's what's brought... You know, pushed them yeah, to bring out a they, codex for Death Watch. They've decided to run with it, haven't they? Yeah. Um, I'm really impressed. I, I, I want a Death Watch army now. Yeah. So you'll probably see some more unboxings of this stuff when it comes out, to be fair, because I really want that Corvus Blackstar. It is ace. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favourite Space Marine esque models in a long time. I don't mind the other flyers, and uh, they've grown on me with time, but I've never looked at one of them and gone, I really like that. Mm. And that one I have. I mean, I think the Space Wolf one, that was about the last one where I thought, I really like this one. Yeah. The other one we put together on the camera. Yes, that one. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I've been putting them together going, no, they're all right. But this one, I really like the look of. I think it's just that Aliens and Batman feel going on at the same time. You know? Yeah. Um, especially since I've just done the Batmobile as well. That's probably... <laughs> if you've seen that video, I've just done the Night Models Batmobile. Um, which I'm still working on actually because I want to change the front of it a little bit yeah, and get it. those front gantries moving. So that's something to look out for in the future. I'll do a full video of that when it's painted. Uh, hopefully we'll do see some Death Watch coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, I'm playing No Man's Sky at the moment so I'm doing a little bit of a, not really a playthrough because I'm not going to make you watch that forever but I've done like the first hour of it and the second hour of it where you do the first missions and stuff and get, and get your hyperdrive Hmm. I've done that bit, I've recorded that. If anyone's interested in seeing, I'll put those videos up. If anyone's interested in seeing more, put it in the comments. If you're not bothered about it, don't worry about it, don't watch it. I'm not really going over the top into video games or anything like that. It's just I really like the look of No Man's Sky since I played it, I really enjoyed it. Hmm. Um, and so there'll be a video of that on the channel. In addition to this, we're also going to run a little mini sort of. Uh, do you remember the Tale of Four Gamers that Games Workshop occasionally does, where it has four gamers? 
Uh, well, there's only two of us, unfortunately. <laughs> so we're going to do a tale of two gamers. Mm. And we're basically going to start with Age of Sigma um, and see if people like that one. We might go into 40k and other games as well. We might go into Mantic. Yeah. In the future. But we're going to start with Age of Sigma because uh, I want to get back into Age of Sigma. I know the General's Handbook's come out and we've got points cost for everything. That's one of my biggest gripes I had with it. That's been solved now. I want to get back into it. I've got plenty of models painted. I've got more to paint. So what we're going to do, we're going to do two starter sets. We've, we're going to pick two of them. Yep. And then we're going to do unboxings for them. We're going to do a quick painting video if we can for them. Uh, we're going to do a battle between the starter sets. Then you, we're going using to, what we've got. Using what we've got. And then we're going to escalate that to a thousand points mm -hmm. using the pitch battle rules in the general's handbook. And, and that might mean we'll do unboxings. getting more. Yeah, we'll do unboxings of the models we do for that. And then we'll do... Well, we don't know whether we need to do another painting thing or not, depending on how similar the models are. And then we'll do a thousand point Age of Signal battle with those models that we've collected. Mm. So that's weird. it's kind of going to do a tale of two gamers thing. <laughs> so, st so stay tuned for that if yeah. you're interested. Uh, other than that, we've been painting a lot of zombie side stuff. Uh, we're giving that a little bit of a break because we've done everything apart from the second set that we've got. Yeah. So we're going to give that a little bit of a break, come back to that because pretty much burnt myself out painting zombies. I've still stuff. not finished but I'm coming to the end of You're what You're just I doing need a to couple paint. of NPCs yeah. that you need to do. Uh, so we're going to be back on to more stuff like this. Yeah. Um, we've already dug out some major Sigma stuff uh, for other factions but we're going to we're going to pick two new factions that we probably haven't covered in depth before if at all and then you'll see unboxings for those. So stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. Anyway I've wrapped it on enough now. Um, so Please like and subscribe, it helps out loads, and hopefully we'll see you again soon guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.